Hey, Jujubes. Okay, Jujubes is kind of like a nickname I come up with. This is what happens when I record. <laughs> Can't talk. Jujubes is a name that I came up with for like my subscribers. And I just think it's cute because it's like Jujubes is what you would call in English. It's the English name for like those little red Hongzao dates, which are these like dates that are in a lot of Chinese cuisine. So it's like got that Chinese aspect and then the English name for it is kind of similar to my name Julie so I just think it's cute. I really love nicknames and pet names so I might just call you guys Jujubes <laughs> from now on <laughs> if that's not weird. It's a little weird I guess but still I think it's cute. Anyway if you don't know who I am I'm Julie and I'm an actor and a writer and this is going to be a video of me reading to you a portion of a novel I wrote when I was 11. Yeah, I mean, doing the math, I'm realizing that when I was actually writing down like the recorded date, like let me show you just a second here. Okay, so this is the, the little PDF of the book that I made when I was 11. It's not like um, published or anything, but I'm kind of like self-publishing it through YouTube kind of by reading it to you in YouTube videos. But anyway, here it says the story officially started on September 13th, 2008. Um, there was an actual like unofficial start date where I made like a first draft to this novel prior to this date. So I think I was 11 when I actually conceptualized and wrote the first draft. I just didn't like record those dates, unfortunately. So don't have those dates on here. But yeah, I was 12 by the time it was September 13th, 2008. I calculated it. I wrote this version, I guess, when I was 12 and then revised it later on. I just want to clear that up. <laughs> um, hopefully that's clear now. You heard it from me. I was 11 when I made the first draft. Yeah, so this is just the first novel from a series I made called The Alphas. And it's a little bit similar to Pretty Little Liars or Gossip Girl or Private by Kate Bryan. It's definitely inspired by those three properties. This is prologue part two. By the way, happy Halloween! I've never really like celebrated Halloween that much. Like my mom kind of referred to it as like Satan's birthday when I was younger. And also trick-or-treating was outlawed in my apartment complex. Such a bummer because I would have really liked to collect candy uh, as a kid. <laughs> but yeah, so I've never really celebrated Halloween too much. But happy Halloween all the same. I kind of did a little bit of something something. I was actually gonna do like no eyebrows today, like kind of like the Mia Goth type of signature Mia Goth look. Uh, but then I chickened out. I'll probably do like a bare eyebrow look in my next video. Or actually, I don't know. I don't know, I might chicken out again. But yeah, my eyebrows without little filling them in is like, really sparse because I over tweezed them when I was younger. Pappy's here. I'm petting Pappy, not just like some imaginary couch arm or something. Anyway, now if you haven't seen the previous video that I uploaded, you might want to if you want to like read it chronologically because this is going to be prologue part two out of two and part one I read to you in my previous YouTube upload. Don't worry, next week I probably won't do another reading to you video. I'll probably do like a green couch story time video about my like first TV acting job on the CW show Charmed or something like that. That's kind of my plan for next week. So if you hate listening to me read to you, you have that to look forward to next week. Okay, so let me just scroll all the way down to prologue part two and begin reading. Prologue part two, here we are. Prologue part two of Prestigious, an Alpha's novel. Bajuli Toe. Hey, guess who's arrived? Teal raised up her hands in triumph, showing that she had escaped her parents and the help's clutches easily as she stepped into the campgrounds of Glensdake Park at roughly midnight. Is it Glensdake? Is that Glensdake? Oh yeah, Glensdake. That's such a funny name. That's funny that I said the help's clutches because it reminds me of the movie The Help. Yeah, so sometimes I'll just pause my reading and just like say little asides that I have. Judging my 12 year old 
writing skills here. She had stepped through her mansion of a house as quietly as possible, taking her quite a while to do and then slipped out the back door. Teal! Kelly rushed and cried. You're here! Teal simply brushed Kelly aside. Of course I am. I would never miss this. Teal looked past her shoulder at Kelly in almost a haughty, haughty way. Teal really didn't think Kelly Rushton, of all people, was worth her talking to at that particular moment. Okay, wait, pause. I know that the internet says the proper way to pronounce prestigious is prestigious but to me that sounds really british so i'm gonna keep saying it like prestigious and i'm really sorry if that's like nails on a chalkboard to you but that's how i've always pronounced it in my head and that's how i've always heard other people pronounce it so yes this novel is called prestigious i just wanted to like <laughs> say that just in case you guys are very sad that i'm pronouncing it prestigious instead of prestigious <laughs> okay back to the novel Sure, Teal and the other high alpha girls had handpicked her to be an alpha and she'd passed the tests, but Teal was far more interested in seeing what the boys had in store for her after all. The SCFP was technically a co-ed sleepover and though Teal would never admit it, she had never been to one before the SCFP. And it was her first SCFP anyway. The ninth generation alphas were still freshmen. SCFP stands for Secret Campfire Party. Durr. <laughs> of course. Callie nodded, her innocent green eyes wide. Sometimes the girl reminded Teal strangely of a robot. Of course, she repeated. Teal turned around and saw Nash Parnell right in front of her. Wait, okay, pause again. So a lot of the guy characters in these novels have names that are like, coincidentally, the names of very famous male celebrities. This is a coincidence because I actually like I made this rough draft and I named all the characters when I was 11. I think I knew of Justin Bieber but I didn't like name any of the characters after male celebrities just so you know like even though like you'll see Justin, Louie, and you already know Nash so far. I know that it might seem like I named Nash after like Nash Greer or something and I named Louie after like Louis Tomlinson and I named Justin after Justin Bieber, but I actually didn't. I came up with these characters' names before I was like even aware of like these male celebrities, so it's literally just a coincidence. I just had like a great t intuition and like taste in names, I guess, that suddenly there are all these male celebrities that were named the same first names as these characters. Spooky. Actually, I don't know if that's spooky, but it's just a big coincidence. Teal turned around and saw Nash Parnell right in front of her. The guy was kind of hard to miss. So how about that deal? You, my lap? He smiled seductively, sitting on a bench alone, setting his backpack of overnight gear down on the rocky path. Teal grinned. Patience, she said, resisting the urge to accompany him on the bench. She had more important business to attend to at the moment. Everyone, come here! Liana Eastcott's voice was heard. Everyone obeyed and went up to her, which thoroughly irritated Teal Gallant. The Alpha Girls leader was freaking sitting on a rock, not to mention with her arm around Snow Elmer. Teal was disgusted that Liana would even invite Snow to the party. Having a non-alpha at the traditionally alphas only party put shame on Teal and she knew Jones Roper, the original alphas member who had come up with the SCFP, would feel the same way. The SCFP had always been alphas only. The three high alpha girls hadn't even gotten approval from the school board yet on whether they saw Snow fit to be an alpha or not. What if they didn't? She couldn't possibly become an alpha without approval. Then even with the school board's approval of the three alpha high alpha girls is newest recruit snow still had to pass all the tests and tasks the high alpha girls would plan to execute on her only then could she be worthy of becoming an alpha and go through the ceremony getting the ring from the headmaster introducing the lovely snow elmer our newest almost member liana raised her arms as if wanting a toast her right fingers were clutching her third beer can liana looked at snow's frightened face and smiled crookedly cheers liana cried out urging the rest of the alphas to raise up their drinks as well which also mostly consisted of beer but teal just drank iced tea and didn't raise her can at all teal wasn't quite sure drinking was a good idea in the first place another thing teal felt liana lacked better judgment then everyone gasped and teal realized liana had fallen off the rock she'd been sitting on and isaac pike was holding her up shifting her steadily back onto the spot she'd been sitting liana didn't seem to notice the incident she was too drunk she blindly patted isaac on his head ruffling up his dark hair from the expression on isaac's face teal could tell he was slightly annoyed by liana's constant drunkenness yes teal knew liana to be a big drinker <laughs> That's my cat. The only times she wasn't drunk was at school on the days she wasn't hungover, sleeping in at home. 
and two had to admit when Leanna was sober, she did quite well in academics and leadership, but her but her constant drunkenness was just another reason to add to the long list of them as to why Teal was better suited as the elf girl's leader. Are you okay? Teal watched hanging at the back as Callie Rushton called out and went up to the front to help Leanna, but she was already too late. There was already a crowd of high alphas blocking her way. Callie sighed, seeming to have given up. Teal shook her head. She was less than pleased by the sight of how every alpha rushed to Leanna's aid, seeing if she was okay. Teal would rather Leanna actually be left alone for a while so she could contemplate her mistakes. The girl didn't need an entourage sticking up for her all the time. She shouldn't need one. She should be able to fend for herself from time to time, if not all the time. Teal made a disgusted face as she heard Leanna say, Oh, sorry. I I'm fine, guys. I'm fine. I'm fine. She was totally dependent. Finally, Teal had enough. She had something to say about this, so Teal pushed her way through the crowd. She didn't really have the need to actually push. Easily being who she was, everyone let her pass. Unlike how they'd responded to poor Callie Rushton. When Teal got to the front and was facing Leanna Eastcott's flawless, but pale from beer face, she said, what did I tell you about beer? It wasn't exactly what she had in mind to say, but it would do. Leanna straightened herself up so that she returned to her elegant posture and was not in the form of a slouch. Leanna squinted at Teal. Teal took it in as Leanna tried to appear threatening. What? Ever, she said in an off-sounding voice, and it seemed as if that was that, which was far from what Teal had been expecting. Clearly, Leanna was not in the mood to get into a cat fight, especially into one with Teal, who Leanna knew on the inside could sometimes count as more of a ringleader than her. Leanna tried to keep up her posture as she slid off the rock, her skirt somewhat flying up as she landed her feet on the ground. She was well aware of Vance Lawrenson's snickers at this, but she chose to ignore it. She figured she should have worn a more camp-appropriate outfit anyway, as she stumbled about on her Desario wedges. She grasped the rather thin arm of Callie Rushton, who had suddenly appeared in front of Leanna, looking a tad exasperated, and leaned against her. With a wobbly saunter, Leanna retreated from her conversation with Teal, which wasn't much of a conversation in the first place. Leanna feared if she ventured further into talking with Teal, she might lose some of her dignity. Besides, it wasn't fair to have an argument with a completely right-minded sober person while she herself was so obviously wasted. She knew she had taken to drinking three cans of beer in half an hour, not a very a wise decision. Teal's glossy pink lips frowned. Fine, walk away, Teal said confidently, even though inside she was quite relieved. She hadn't really wanted to get into much of a dispute. There was enough drama at alpha parties without catfights. Soon, the crowd started to disperse and people got back to partying. There wasn't much dancing because there wasn't much music. Blasting songs was a bad idea if they didn't want to get caught. So, most people went back into groups laughing, talking, sitting way too close together, making out, and playing such games like Truth or Dare. Hey! Someone yelled. Teal turned around to find Vance Lawrenson being pushed onto the ground from where he was previously sitting on a log-type bench with his buddies Nash Parnell and Louis Overbury. Teal saw Leanna shoot a cold glare at Vance for the loud disruption and commotion he'd created. Her eyes narrowed as Vance rolled around on the ground trying to contain his laughter. Vance didn't respond to Leanna's look, he just continued blatantly repeating stupid penguin. It was probably an inside joke. Nash laughed along with Vance and Anthony Overbury current boyfriend of Mikkel, rolled his eyes before sitting down where Vance had been. Teal returned her eyes back to Leanna, who had stopped leaning on Callie. She put her hands on her hips and held a bored expression on her face. She said something towards the boys, but Teal didn't hear what it was, and obviously the boys hadn't either, which seemed to just irritate Leanna even more. I want to start the campfire, Leanna yelled at them, trying to get their attention from afar. It was loud enough that everyone at the campsite glanced at her. Leanna suddenly noticed from behind her where Isaac was. Leanna had been looking for Isaac ever since the crowd parted, but had been stuck with Callie, who was nice enough to support Leanna's shaky legs. Except she wasn't shaking anymore, so in fact, she didn't necessarily need Callie by her side. Isaac looked up to meet Leanna's eyes, smiled warmly, and then went back to his seemingly deep conversation with Snow Elmer. Rage instantly filled Leanna. She had brought this girl to the party, and now she was talking to Isaac? The same Isaac Leanna had feelings for? Leanna pushed Callie forward towards the boys sitting on the log and whispered, Tell them to set the fire up, please, sweetie. Callie stared back at Leanna like a fawn. God, she was hopeless. Leanna sharpened her tone of voice. Order them to set up the fire now! And Leanna pushed Callie forwards again. 
Callie sighed and muttered, fine. But Leanna hadn't heard. She had walked up to Isaac and Snow. The two of them were sharing a thermos full of hot chocolate. Gosh, how cute. If it wasn't for the fact that that hot chocolate was supposed to be on to Leanna. Isaac had even told her beforehand through text that he was going to bring it so she wouldn't get too cold. Hi, Leanna muttered, glaring down at Isaac and Snow, both of whom had not been aware of Leanna before she spoke. Startled, Isaac Pike lifted his head to stare up at Leanna, who had her arms crossed. Isaac didn't seem to notice the frustration Leanna was showcasing on her face and through her body language. Oh, hey, Isaac said cheerfully. Then he patted a spot on his other side. Want to sit down? Isaac's obliviousness enraged Leanna even more, and she began to tap her foot. Her eyes shot back and forth between Isaac's carefree expression and Snow's now fearful one. Had Isaac been so focused on snow that he hadn't even heard Leanna's want to start the campfire? Did he even care about her anymore? Or was snow suddenly his pet? Leanna tried to remain calm as she stated, I want to start the campfire. Then biting her lips, she added, did you not hear me? With a tint of annoyance. Yeah, Isaac admitted looking down. I did, but he looked to Snow as if asking for her permission to do something Leanna wanted him to do, since it was tradition that the Alpha boys would have to start the fire. Leanna had always thought she was Isaac's first priority, though. Snow just stared back at Isaac, wide-eyed and innocent, until Leanna couldn't take it anymore. She reached down and grabbed Snow by the arm, making Snow instinctively let go of the thermos. Therefore, the hot beverage spilled against the front of Isaac's dark gray Burberry t-shirt. Snow's eyes only got wider. Sorry, but Isaac's eyes were elsewhere. His brown eyes were piercing through Leanna's coldly. The thermos fell onto the towel Snow and Isaac were sitting on, which was laid out as if it were a picnic on the grass edging the campgrounds. Hot chocolate continued spreading out on the towel, but Isaac didn't do anything to stop it. Leanna merely shrugged, pulling Snow off the little towel. If you'll excuse me, Isaac, I need a word with my plus one, Leanna announced, her voice thick. Go ahead, Isaac replied, his eyebrows furrowing into a look that was neither angry or confused. It was more like in between. Leanna still couldn't get over the fact that Isaac had forgotten who the hot chocolate was supposed to be for. All the while, Teal was observing this scene with much interest, even though she couldn't hear a word Leanna was saying as she stalked off with snow on her arm. Teal hadn't heard a word of anything. She decided to go forward and confront Isaac about what had happened. After all, Isaac and Teal had known each other since kindergarten and their parents were good friends. Teal trusted that Isaac was comfortable talking to her. What just happened? Teal asked, faking her concern, while leaning down to help Isaac clean up the mess from the spill of hot chocolate. Isaac sighed as he run out the liquid from the towel. Then he dug into his Hugo Boss duffel bag and grabbed a clean t-shirt out, which Teal could clearly tell was from True Religion. It was cute. It had a little green dove on it and said peace. Isaac pulled off his stained shirt and put on the new one before looking at Teal and explaining. I have no idea. Do you think maybe Leanna's PMSing or something? She just came up to me and was all peeved looking and she pulled snow away. Isaac stuffed the nearly dry towel into the duffel bag even though it still smelled like chocolate. Teal wrinkled her nose. If it were her, she definitely wouldn't have done that. Then again, Isaac probably didn't care. I think she's mad because I wanted to keep talking with Snow instead of setting up the fire, but honestly, that's so freaking stupid. What kind of guy does she think I am? Snow was all freaked out and I was trying to be nice. Leanna expects me to just drop everything and do whatever she says, Isaac went on, making his complaint. I think she was jealous, Teal smiled, rubbing Isaac on the shoulder. Teal was strangely supportive of Isaac and Leanna as a couple. Just ask her out already. Isaac laughed. Huh, is it that obvious that I like her? He said nervously. No, Teal grinned, but it's obvious she likes you. And with that, Teal winked and went to find Mikel Thurlow, whom she hadn't seen all night. Isaac blinked, processing Teal's advice through his brain. He finally decided it was good news that Leanna liked him. He still wanted to talk to her, though, about why she was so pissed off at him. He didn't think there was much reason to be jealous. He and Snow were just talking. He swung his Hugo Boss bag over his shoulder and set off on the search for Leanna's light brown head. He finally found her, but she had gathered the Alpha Boys to help her make the fire and seemed fully occupied, Snow hanging closely behind her as she shouted orders. Isaac Isaac smiled, shaking his head at how well he seemed to know Leanna. Whenever the girl was upset, she'd busy herself. The guys got to work and Isaac saw that Leanna was alone with Snow. He frowned suddenly as he realized, while heading closer towards the two, that Leanna didn't seem very happy with Snow. Out of the corner of her green eye, Leanna noticed Isaac approaching with a none too pleased expression. Leanna silently told herself to cool it. She turned to Isaac's suspicious face and smiled sweetly. Before Leanna could open her mouth, Isaac interrupted, What were you saying to Snow? He looked kind of mad, and so Leanna was taken aback. 
well, why would you ask that? Leanna said, a little caught off guard, but still managing to keep up a nothing's wrong type of act. You looked upset at her, Isaac answered, glancing at Snow's help me expression. Snow's heartbeat was pulsing through her veins as she rubbed her arms, which were dotted with goosebumps from the chilly wind. Leanna had just informed, more like commanded Snow, that she had to stay away from Isaac Pike. Apparently, he was a jerk. Although Snow believed otherwise. She had a feeling Leanna just wanted the guy all to herself, which Snow was absolutely fine with. She was new and there seemed to be plenty of hot guys at the party. In fact, Snow Elmer wasn't entirely clueless. She knew who the alphas were. She'd read up on them before she attended her first day at Gateway Academy. The school was famous after all, for that very reason, the alphas. As soon as Snow's mom told her she had gotten a spot at the most prestigious, slash prestigious high school in north america she'd squealed more than glad to leave her stupid boarding school in connecticut behind her family had then proceeded to move to brooks road the very reason snow had hated boarding school was because she couldn't have everything from home so she wasn't about to go reside in another on-campus dorm room even if it was more like a hotel room than dorm even if it could one day be the pike in besides her parents had a nice house in mind anyway so it had worked out perfectly and now the elmers were just another wealthy family living in a house on a spick and span street with a constantly freshly mowed lawn well i'm not am i Leanna said loudly, forcing Isaac's eyes back onto her as if aggravated that Isaac had been again looking to Snow. Like Leanna wasn't enough of an eye fixation for him. Sure, Snow Elmer had extraordinary features, what with the platinum blonde hair and ice blue eyes, but Leanna Escott was supposed to be the it girl. Then she glanced at Snow and gave her a nudge to say something to back her up. Isaac looked back at Snow expectantly. I... I mean, she... She was just warning me about... Leanna's eyes flashed about how there are bears in the woods here you know not to leave any food in the cabins and stuff and how we can't get caught because uh, of the police and uh she showed me where the bathrooms were isaac didn't seem to fully believe all that snow said but he seemed like he was too tired to press any further so he grunted and left pulling his fingers through his dark hair sexily snow could definitely see why liana had a thing for this guy along with the fact that he was the alpha boys leader but he was also such a sweetheart yet snow couldn't have him Leanna had made that pretty clear. Both girls watched Isaac walk away and sit down next to Eldon Reeve. Eldon was the bookworm and probably the less social of the Alpha Boys. He was more deep, a poem and song writer, guitar and piano player, the one hopeless romantics fell for. Leanna herself didn't even know him that well. He was a very appealing mystery waiting to be solved, just not by her. She was way more interested in the likes of Isaac who was now discussing something with Eldon that assumably had to do with literature because Eldon was pointing at certain parts in his book. Teal joined the other alphas around the campfire, which was now lit and growing bigger. Teal took in the setting and looked around at all the familiar faces. She'd known most people since childhood. A lot of the Alpha's families lived in Brooks Road, mostly due to the fact that their parents wanted dearly that their children attend Gateway and become an Alpha. After all, everyone knew that it was easier to become an Alpha when relatives had gone to Gateway in the past, or perhaps had been an Alpha themselves. The school board administration kept close records of everyone who had ever gone to Gateway Academy and took note of, well, notable students along with their families. Teal's eyes landed, as it often did, on Nash Parnell, who was hovering around the campfire with most of the other alpha boys. He had on his goofy grin, showing off his dimples as he told some sort of story. By the looks of Vance's reactions to certain parts of Nash's story, it was a summary of some sports game. But then Teal saw another guy who came up to Vance and Nash, giving them a nod. The universal male greeting for those who thought they were too cool for a simple wave. His hands were full though, gripping around two beers. He handed one to Vance as he sat down. Teal was sure she hadn't seen him before, which was odd, especially if the guy was at the secret campfire party. Plus, he couldn't be an intruder. He looked as if he were good friends with all the guys. He had a head of blonde hair, and Teal squinted her eyes to try to get a better look at his face. Somehow he looked familiar in just a weird way. It was in a way that made Teal think she'd never seen him in person before, but maybe had perhaps seen him on TV or the internet. Very suspicious indeed. Teal looked around to find whether Leanna had discovered this guy yet, but Teal realized that Leanna was too busy dragging snow along to the cooler where she retrieved a couple more beers for herself. God, what a rebel. She couldn't even fulfill her duties as Alpha Girls leader. She was supposed to be on top of everything and well aware of anyone new on the Alpha Boys side. Besides, didn't she and Isaac talk often? Unless Isaac was still upset at Leanna and vice versa. 
Teal looked at Isaac, who was fully engaged with Eldon's book, nodding at whatever Eldon was saying. Then again, maybe Lyanna already knew who this new guy was. Maybe Teal was just slow on the news. Teal turned her gaze back to Nash and the new boy. This time, Nash caught Teal's line of sight and yelled, Come here! Teal rolled her eyes before making her way to the group of noisy boys. She had to get there anyway, in order to question the newcomer. As soon as Teal arrived in front of Nash, he patted his lap, grinning sheepishly, but Teal for once didn't notice him. Who's this? She asked instead, locking her eyes on the blondie. The guy wasn't looking at Teal, he seemed very interested in his cell phone screen, which Teal Gallant found rather rude considering who she was and all. Justin. Vance nodded towards him and nudged him after he didn't respond. Huh? First he looked to Vance, who directed his eyesight to Teal. Oh hi, sorry, I just got a text from my teacher. Justin smirked, finally looking Teal in the eye. His expression was as if he was unaware how odd he sounded. Was this guy seriously that much of a teacher's pet that he texted back and forth with one? Was that even legal? Maybe he and his teacher were having a smoky hot affair. Teal raised her eyebrows at him, intrigued, silently telling him to go on. Oh, right. Justin laughed shakily as he rubbed the back of his hand against his forehead. I meant my tutor. Well, She's like my teacher for when I'm not in school. You know, it's tough. Too much training. I can't really attend school on all days. She was just telling me about how I might be a little ahead of, um, you guys in math. She gave me a few pointers and reminded me to tell my father he hadn't paid her for the last month yet. Training? Tutor? Teal heard Nash chuckle. Dude, I don't think Teal even knows who you are. I think you confused her he said to Justin. Justin, in return, looked puzzled at first, but then he laughed nervously. He should have thought of that before he went blabbering about his training to someone who obviously didn't even know what he was talking about. Teal frowned, unsure of what to say. She wasn't exactly used to situations where she didn't know everything about everything. It was quite appalling to her that the boys seemed to know so much more about Justin than she did, and even though it was only natural. He's a real tennis player, Teal. He's in all the sports magazines as the youngest to get whatever records and so on, I think, and he's got all these televised tournaments and stuff. I'm not too clear. <laughs> I don't watch tennis much, Nash admitted, but Justin just grinned, looking amused and not at all offended. Teal's mouth dropped into an O. She should have realized. Now she remembered where she'd seen Justin before. He was on the cover of an old sports magazine her dad had made her throw away a couple of days ago. And she also recalled seeing his face on the TV when her brother was watching the sports news during one of the times her brother had come back to visit from university about a week ago. Right, sorry, I knew I recognized you from somewhere. Teal turned back to Justin, slightly embarrassed, but determined not to show it in front of this new guy. You've heard of the alphas, right? Justin grinned and lifted his thumb, revealing a silver band with the A etched into it. Teal couldn't help herself, she gasped. How could she not have known about a new alpha member? She must have been too caught up in all that was going on at the time. Schoolwork, event planning, dealing with her brother's visit, and her mother who had fl flew to Italy only two nights ago because one of Teal's aunts just got diagnosed with leukemia. The alphas also did their own official ceremonies to making one become an alpha separately. The alpha boys would do their ceremony for making Justin an alpha without any alpha girls present, and same for the girls. Yeah, I've heard all about you too. Teal Gallant, right? I know the whole story. Justin glanced at Isaac across the campfire, which the boys had assumably finished setting up a while ago. Isaac was now kicking a soccer ball around with the overberries, Anthony and Louis. Isaac told me. Then Justin leant forward towards Teal, lowering his voice. Personally, I think that you'd be a way better alpha girls leader than Liana. Teal blushed. Finally, someone saw her for who she was, a leader at heart. Then Teal saw Justin look up at someone behind her, so she turned around. Speak of the devil. Leanna was making a drunken scene, stumbling before the boys and Teal, and eventually tripping, falling flat on her face. Nash, Teal, and Justin didn't do anything to help her. They just watched, and Teal decided to take a seat between Justin and Nash, finally noticing that Vance was missing. That's the spot he'd been sitting at before. It was weird how Teal hadn't picked up on Vance leaving. She must have been too focused on Justin. But at the moment, she was too distracted, watching Liana make a fool of herself. It was rather entertaining. What Liana was doing now was crawling across the grounds in front of Nash, Teal, and Justin, proving what Justin just whispered correct. Her skirt were... Her skirt was, I guess. That's a grammar mistake. Her skirt was rising up even more as she slowly moved towards Shirley Manning. Teal hadn't seen Shirley that night yet either, not really. Shirley looked disgusted by Leanna's mannerisms and she quickly pulled her up. This guy's Teal heard Shirley mutter, and Teal silently agreed completely. Shirley shot Leanna several more scolding looks and then took her towards the washrooms. Leanna had undoubtedly overdosed on alcohol and was in need of perhaps purging. 
Teal was glad she didn't have to deal with that. Smiling smugly as Shirley tried not to puke herself while watching Cygnus rise in Leanna's otherwise perfect complexion. I feel bad for her, Justin sighed, shaking his head. Startled, Teal looked over at him and then, digesting what he said, she found that she surprisingly agreed. Leanna was wasting herself away. It was actually quite sad. Teal looked around, searching for where Vance went. Her eyes landed on his sunny blonde hair, an easy to spot feature, and rolled her eyes reacting to what he was doing. So typical of him. Hey, beautiful, Vance was saying, harassing the new girl. Like always, Snow Elmer appeared stunned and even a bit scared by Vance's brazenness. Stop tormenting Snow, she's not used to people like you, Teal shouted with a hint of a smile in her voice. Vance looked around, his eyes drawn immediately to Teal's. Her voice could be heard over any other and was usually very demanding. Snow's frightened face began to relax as Vance slumped back, scratching his head. Then he held both his hands up, showing Teal his palms in surrender. Fine, he yelled, grinning. Then he went and intruded on Isaac and the Overbury's mini soccer game. Snow shot Teal an extremely grateful glance before joining Mikkel Thurlow in conversation. The two seemed to have been getting along well. Marshmallow time, Leanna interrupted the moment, coming back from the washroom, apparently restored to her natural glowing self. Shirley, on the other hand, looked sulky as she crossed her arms, glowering at Leanna's back. Teal wondered what had gone down in the washroom. The stick things are in this white bucket, Shirley added, although all enthusiasm was sucked out of her. Suddenly, white things started flying through the air and Leanna's childish giggle rained through the fresh pine air. Leanna was throwing the marshmallows at them. A marshmallow hit the side of Teal's head and she groaned, starting to get up so she could actually catch some marshmallows before they were eaten up by the dirt ground. She, for one, actually wanted to eat and roast marshmallows, not play games with them. Where are you going? Nash pouted at her. Frowning Teal responded to get marshmallows, duh. Nash laughed, pushing Teal back down on the bench and getting up himself. I'll catch you some. And he bounded away as he started the who can get the most marshmallows contest with his fellow friends. Teal sat back happily. Now this was how she expected to be treated. It wasn't long before Nash came back to Teal. He had a wide grin on his face as he gave Teal five, no, six marshmallows. Teal struggled to hold onto the big white marshmallows, three of them in each hand. A oh, one, Nash said proudly, although his mouth was full of marshmallow. Teal giggled softly. It seems you've already eaten your prize. She stared at his mouth, looking at the sticky marshmallow bits on his lips. She kind of wanted to kiss him. At the moment, she couldn't though. She wouldn't allow herself to. Nash sat down on the bench again, sticking all his remaining marshmallows on the roasting stick before handing Teal one as well. I had to. There were too many, Nash protested. Teal laughed contentedly and then urged Nash to get up and walk with her to the campfire so they could actually begin roasting the marshmallows. Teal hadn't bothered to see where Justin went. She genuinely trusted him, not just because he saw Leanna as a crazy drunk. He just seemed like an overall good, straightforward guy. She guessed he was transferring to Gateway because of his parents. They probably wanted him to have more smarts and to get into an ivy or something. After all, one can't thrive in the world of professional sport playing for Forever. And by the looks of it, Justin was good at math. Kudos to Isaac Pike for making an excellent choice of an alpha. And of course, Nash and Anthony, who Teal was sure had something to do with picking Justin as well since they were high alphas. Over time, alphas can become high alphas if they get enough good notes from the staff and school board. You know, if the school board and staff are impressed with the person as a student. Just because the school board didn't pick the... Just because... The school board didn't pick the person as one of the first three alphas, didn't mean they could never be a high alpha. As most people knew, the school board would pick three girls as alphas and three boys as alphas to begin with and elect two out of three girls and two out of three boys to run for alpha leader. For the boys, the three had been Anthony, Nash, and Isaac. So they'd been the first high alphas, Anthony and Nash. Technically, Isaac was a high alpha too, just like Leanna, but they were more well known as, well, the alpha leaders. Nash and Isaac were elected to fight for the leader position, except Nash quickly withdrew. Nash and Isaac were best friends, and he probably didn't want to add any unneeded tension. Nash seemed to also think the position wasn't at all fit for him, and Teal happened to agree. She couldn't picture how Nash would deal with all that pressure. Everyone knew he wasn't good at fighting stress, and he wasn't all that responsible either, so by default, Isaac had won. They then proceeded to pick four more boys, which had been Roy Rodriguez, Louis Overbury, Anthony's fraternal twin, Vance Lawrenson, and Eldon Reeve, which told up to seven alpha boys. The maximum number of alpha boys was eight, and same for the girls. So now, with just another alpha two, they were at their max. The alpha girls would have seven girls once Snow became one. Teal was still a little flustered over how Penelope Flynn had vanished over spring break, which was two months ago. She had given her alpha ring back and disappeared into thin air. No one had heard a word from 
from her and only the headmaster knew why why she had gone because she would have had to explain why she was leaving gateway to him and why she was giving back her alpha ring it was so weird her not being an alpha anymore and delaney joseph was a professional athlete as well out on her swimming duties she would be back sometime in sophomore year and the school board was holding her spot as a student for her teal wasn't personally too close to delaney so her absence wasn't noticeable so have you ever had a cat fight with another girl? Nash smiled mischievously, one hand in his pocket while roasting his marshmallow. It was a huge fire and just about everyone was around the fire now roasting their marshmallows. The air filled with a scent of deliciousness. <laughs> a scent of deliciousness. Mikkel and Snow were talking vividly, seeming to really have connected. The two girls had similarities, Teal had to admit. They both had gorgeous, slightly abnormal eye colors. Callie was reddening, and Teal had a feeling it wasn't just because of the fire's heat. She was standing right next to Justin, giggling uncontrollably, her shoulder brushing against his. Roy Rodriguez was behind Vance's obnoxious laughing frame, exhaling smoke from his cigarette calmly, looking deep into the forest. Eldon sat back too, and Teal could hear him strumming his acoustic guitar. Ladies, don't fight, Teal replied finally after gazing warmly around the campfire. Yeah, it's a shame, Nash added, nodding. Then Nash suddenly jumped around idiotically. What is wrong with you? Teal cried, scared out of her Steve Madden flats. But then she saw that his marshmallow was on fire, and Teal burst out laughing hysterically. Nash joined in too, after his frantic state of blowing out the fire. He had looked ridiculous. Everyone else who had seen the scene started laughing, and Leanna shot them a suspicious glance. Apparently, she hadn't seen what had passed on right in front of her eyes because she was too busy complaining about the sparks she swore could light up her brow hair, if only. Teal watched as Leanna whispered to Callie, a confused look on her face. Leanna pointed at Nash and seemed to be asking what the hell had happened. Callie was laughing too hard to utter a word of explanation to Leanna, which apparently frustrated Leanna even more. Teal spun around, hiding her Snickers. Teal bit into her marshmallow, which was now in a brown shade. Teal started to chew the soft substance as she fantasized how great it would be if only she could lead. Yes, I got it open! The cry of Vance Lawrenson was heard throughout the dark camping area. Finally, Shirley Manning moaned as she dragged her humongous pink luggage bag into the cabin Vance had just managed to break into. Vance was pretty smart in reality. He'd previously even explained to Teal that he got his lockpicking skills from his cousin, George. He claimed that he and George always snooped around as little kids back in Australia. That's the country Vance had been born in. He'd moved to North America when he was three years old, though. He'd visited relatives and family in Australia every summer up until he was 12 years old. His parents got too busy after that. Anyway, George was currently in Australian prison for breaking and entering. Vance shined his flashlight on Shirley's tired-looking face, and Teal was pleased to note the bags under her eyes. Her concealer was finally wearing off. No need for haste, he said, laughing as Shirley groaned and covered her face from the light. The fire was long gone. Nighttime had taken over the camping area. It was already 2.53 in the morning, almost 3 a.m. The Alphas had picked partners to bunk with randomly out of Louis' hat, and Teal had been stuck with Leanna. Teal was having bad luck these days, so Teal had to share a cabin with Leanna, her arch enemy. It couldn't get much worse than this, but Teal didn't know what she was thinking about. It was going to get much worse. Leanna, Teal, over here, I got this. Isaac shouted towards Teal and Leanna. Vance had apparently either taught Isaac how to pick locks as well, or Isaac had a few tricks up his own sleeve. He'd just opened up a cabin. Come on, Leanna spoke. Then she pulled her suitcase up and sauntered up to the cabin. Teal sighed and followed her. Teal dropped right onto a bed the instant she got in the cabin. The cabin smelled of fir trees and pine cones. It was one of the most calming scents Teal had smelled in a while, but she still missed the lavender air freshener from her bedroom. Teal shut her eyes closed. She was tired. Aw, sleep already? Don't be a wuss. Teal heard heard Leanna's voice and Teal sat up to look at her. Leanna had the cooler in her lap, the one with the beer cans inside. Teal was surprised that there was still more beer. She would have thought the rest of the office finished them all by now, but nope, there were several, about five left. How much had Vance Lawrenson even brought? A hundred? Leanna was drinking out of a brand new can, and Teal saw an empty one beside her. Teal really hoped Leanna had picked up all her beer cans. They needed to be recycled out of the way so that no one would suspect anyone had been at the site overnight without permission. Teal really wanted to tell Leanna off for being such a stupid young girl. Leanna was drinking way too much. Teal doubted Leanna's petite frame could overcome so much toxins. <laughs> so much toxins. So many toxins, I should say. Teal didn't want to sound too motherly, though, and Leanna laughed coldly, seeing Teal's disapproval on her face. Teal sighed and rubbed her eyes. They were feeling stingy. Teal laid down on her bed for the night. Through Teal's eyelashes, she saw Leanna get up from being sprawled out on the floor. Teal was pretty sure the girl had gotten herself completely wasted now. I'm going to the washroom. 
Leanna stuttered. Then she tripped out the door clumsily. Teal thought Leanna ought to take off her stupid wedges already. Seriously, who wore heels to a campsite anyway? Obviously, Leanna thought too highly of herself, like she could afford to mess up a pair of heels or something. Maybe she just wanted to appear taller than everyone, though. Teal sighed, shaking her head as she let Leanna go off to barf. Something struck Teal, and her eyes flashed open. Was it irresponsible to let Leanna go out on her own? What if something happens? Teal's hand flew up to her mouth as images of Leanna being kidnapped filled her mind. Leanna would be vulnerable roll out there by herself alone the alpha leader in a state of vulnerability teal found herself frowning but then she rolled her eyes at herself she shouldn't be caring about liana let her get herself into trouble for once she needed to learn a lesson badly teal bit the inside of her cheek whatever happens would be liana's fault anyway right no one would blame her would they she tried to picture Isaac telling her she should have been a better roommate, but couldn't. And hey, maybe nothing would happen at all. Teal closed her eyes. Teal finally convinced herself she was just overthinking things like she normally did. Leanna being out there was no big deal. Teal put her face back into her pillow and let her thoughts drift towards other things, like whether her dog, Doodle, would give it away that Teal was missing, or if Callie and Justin were going to become a couple. Teal had seen them closing up to each other once the marshmallows were all either eaten or on the floor. Teal fell right asleep, letting the rest of the night go on without her. Teal awoke to a beeping noise and sirens. Oh my god, did they get caught? Teal jumped out of her bed and found that the beeping noise was coming from her cell phone. Teal looked around, remembering that she had spent the night sleeping in a cabin, and she felt the soreness seeping up into her as she moved to sit up. Something felt wrong. Teal stared at the empty bed beside her. There were beer cans all over the floor. Teal saw a familiar luggage case. Teal gasped. Beep. Beep. Leanna. Where is she now? Beep. Teal flung herself around, irritated at the beeping noise, and winced at the pain in her legs. Teal picked up her cell phone hastily. She had three text messages. Teal bit her lip as she opened the first one. It had been sent at 5.42 a.m. It read, Teal, leave right now. We have to get away from the campsite or we will be with the cops. IP. It had been from Isaac Pike. Teal looked at the time. 6.04 a.m. Why hadn't anyone come to drag her out of bed? Why hadn't Leanna? And what did the police come here for? Who could have revealed that they had gathered here without permission? Was that even the case? at all? Questions filled up in Teal's head, threatening to drown her in confusion. Teal started packing her stuff up. Teal glanced at Leanna's stuff, wondering if she should grab them for her. She had to make sure there was no evidence left anyway, right? Beep, beep. Teal groaned in frustration. She opened her second text message. It was sent at 5.45 a.m. from Callie Rushton. OMG, Leanna is dead. We're all leaving. The cops are here. KR. What? How could Leanna be dead? And Callie couldn't have been lying. She was too obedient for that. Teal suddenly remembered letting Leanna out the door with her clumsy drunk self. Teal couldn't bear to even begin to think what could have happened to her. Teal made the quick decision of leaving Leanna's stuff there. When the police found it, they'd know what happened to Leanna. She was drunk and she had broken into the cabin by herself. Teal wanted nothing to do with Leanna's death and she was sure the rest of the alphas felt the same way. They had to or else they'd all get kicked out of the alphas for sure and Teal knew the alphas was where they all belonged. For better or for worse, Teal made sure she took everything she had ever set her fingerprints on. She packed the mattress sheets and all her stuff into her LAMB tote. She glanced warily at the cooler Leanna had left behind. It still had one beer can in it, and Teal couldn't possibly let the police uncover Vance's cooler, so she unfortunately forced herself to carry that one too. Teal would have to throw away her flats later so that the police wouldn't track down her shoe prints. Teal peeked through the cabin windows, wondering if when she stepped out, the cops would tell her she was under arrest. No one was there. Teal covered her fingertips with her sleeves as she opened the door. Teal creeped out, holding her suitcase, and fled to her house by foot, noticing that the campgrounds was as empty as ever. Now in the broad daylight, Teal could see shiny flashes of silver on the ground. Leanna hadn't cleaned after her drunk self after all. Good. Surely the police would realize that that was all there was to it. Teal rushed into a shortcut trail out of the campgrounds, the closest route to her house, which, thank God, was not too far away. Luckily, Teal hadn't packed much in her tote bag, so it was easy to lug around. The cooler was the real problem. Vance owed her for this one. Teal could bet he was probably worrying about it right now, not knowing where it was. Leanna had stolen it, practically. She walked on grass, so it was harder to track which way she went, and she didn't give a backward glance. Teal didn't read her third text message. She never got to, because as Teal breathed a sigh of relief, standing in front of her mansion, she slipped her cell phone into the garbage. A month later, Leanna's death case was closed. Leanna Escott had been run over by a car. The driver was let go, partly because it had been clear that Leanna had been drunkenly suicidal, and partly because Leanna's parents let him. The story was, Leanna roasted marshmallows and broke into one of Glensdake Park's camping cabins. She got drunk and headed out. She got hit by a car. She died. End of story. It was plastered all over the country's newspapers about how picture-perfect Brooks Road had yet again broke out into a scandal. The Alpha Girls later, too. Stories covered it over all the radios and all the television sets. 
Shirley Manning had even been requested to do an interview for a magazine. She'd refused though. The residents of Brooks Road simply tried to ignore it in denial, perhaps. That's what Brooks Road got the most hatred for, for their uptight and heartless perfectionists. They brushed the poor girl's death aside and figured that keeping their fingernails manicured and their business suits neatly folded was more important. The alphas, meanwhile, all kept the truth in because they knew that if they let it go, they'd all be punished for sneaking out and having a party without parental permission. Some would get sent to a boarding school, others would be sent to who knows where, and the possibility of them being partially responsible for Leanna's death might ruin their lives forever. Then Shirley Manning mysteriously got expelled from Gateway Academy two weeks after Leanna's funeral, which had taken place early June. People by the dozen, young and old, had gathered at Brooks Road's shorelines to say goodbye to Leanna Eastcott's ashes, which were thrown into the waters. All the alphas politely attended, even Justin Barrick, and sat through the service silently. Many adults patted their heads and rubbed their shoulders, encouraging them to cheer up and move on without Leanna. Not not that they needed that sort of encouragement. With Shirley's expulsion, occurring only days from the last day of Teal's and the other alphas' freshman year, had been the source of many flying rumors about why she was expelled. Some said she'd had an affair with a teacher because a pretty good-looking male teacher, who was apparently the guy who taught Shirley's art class, had been laid off at the end of the year. Some also convincingly spread that it was because Shirley Manning cheated on her final exams due to the fact that she couldn't study when she was too busy mourning for her best friend. The latter was more likely to be the actual truth because Teal admitted that Shirley was pretty upset over Leanna's death, more angry than sad, actually. No one got in contact with Shirley, and her family moved out of Brooks Road. Shirley had previously gotten her phone broken, so no text applied either. Four months after that camp night, things had changed around Gateway Academy. That's the prologue. Yeah, so that's kind of like a little spooky Halloween little prologue for you. That's the beginning of my novel, Prestigious. The circumstances that we start with. The Alpha Girls leader, Leanna Eastcott, is dead. A lot of questions remain unanswered. Thanks for reading with me. And what else did I want to say? Oh yeah, I wanted to ask you guys, you jujubes, <laughs> um, what you guys have been reading. I just started reading Shine by Jessica John, and I'm liking it so far. Hope you guys are reading books that you like. Bye.